The opinions expressed on the program you are watching are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Welcome back. Here we are with Penny Bird Johnson and uh, hearing a really remarkably inspirational story. I think, Penny, thank you for being willing to share your story. Oh, thank you for asking me. Yeah, I think there's lots of people who deal with health issues and um, the loss of, of wellness in their lives and oftentimes want to just shut down and mm -hmm. uh, not discuss it, um, not even allow it to be part of their you know, daily reality. They want to ignore mm -hmm. it. And I feel as though you're a woman who has embraced I've your life. Mm -hmm. All right, so you've learned to embrace mm -hmm. who you are today. Mm -hmm. And let's just talk about that journey. When did you discover that um, losing your sight could be something that would affect you someday? I was 16 when I was first diagnosed, but my vision was fine. Okay. And I was driving in the city day and night, not worrying a thing. In fact, I had uh, a little dream that I would be a car racer. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, I, I was maybe in denial at that point because I was fine. Oh, well, whatever. They don't know what they're saying. And if it happens, I'll be so old, it won't matter. Okay. All right. Now, you did have a mm -hmm. mom and mm -hmm. a grandma mm -hmm. who also had this degenerative mm -hmm. condition. Tell our viewers, what exactly is your condition? Well, it's called retinitis pigmentosa. And to simply explain it the way a doctor explained to me, that your retina is lined with a million lights and from the outside in, for some reason, they didn't know for many years, those lights just start to go out, and they might go out in, in random patches, and that just steals your peripheral vision or your, your um, central vision. It gives a lot of people tunnel vision, but okay. for me, I have patchy vision, so, so um, other people have observed that, that I move my head a lot if I'm looking at them or looking at a picture, right. just trying okay. to find that place where I can see the clearest. Okay, and does that change depending on what you're looking at? You, you oh, have to it'll set change. Your, yeah. Depending on the lighting or my level of tiredness or um, just you know, the weather, the time of month, time of year, who okay. knows? It's always changing. Okay, yeah. so now you're 16 years old. Mm. You've been watching your mother and your grandmother dealing with legal blindness issues, mm -hmm. and the doctor has given you this diagnosis. How long was it until you started feeling your sight being impaired? Well, it didn't start to affect me till I was in my 30s with my fourth pregnancy, and I okay. thought. I was having trouble seeing the notes because I had to sit farther away from the piano because of the baby. <laughs> ah, okay. But uh, then, no, it just seemed to increase and I was getting more and more aware of that, that things weren't, it wasn't that I even thought that it was my vision. I thought, well, what's wrong with that stop sign? They they need to repaint the T because the T would be missing in stop. Okay. And then I get closer, oh, there it is. Oh, well, that's just so weird. The lighting must have reflected. You know, I had all explanations. It couldn't okay. be me. Okay, no, so not I really even realizing that no. this is how this um, condition mm -hmm. was going to affect you. Mm -hmm. So as you shared in, in the last segment, you began having to reassess life. You couldn't be a nurse, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what you had been doing. Is, mm -hmm. Had that been a dream that oh, you yes. had to lay down? And how did you deal with that? Well, it wasn't as difficult as you might think, because I was by then expecting my third child and um, just, you know, even though, yeah, it was with the fourth one that I felt it in the day, but I did a lot of night shifts and stuff like that and just started to feel it was just getting more and more difficult and I wasn't enjoying it. Okay. And, um, and then getting into music teaching part time by then, it was just easier, it felt like an easier plan to just stay home and develop that some more and work as a nurse less until finally, yeah, just give it up. It's just too hard. Okay. Now you were uh, mentioning in the last segment also that you were reading the story of someone who had chosen to literally lay down and, and almost just give up on life. Mm -hmm. What would your word be to someone? I mean, we're talking about um, legal blindness and mm -hmm. blindness issues, but there's so many people today mm -hmm. that um, just for any reason, 
just want to throw in the towel and say, I'm done. Mm -hmm. What would your word of advice be coming out of your your place, um, your misery? Often we like to say here on the Jody Faith Show that our misery will become our ministry. Mm. You know, I know that mm. you are being used now um, in concert situations, speaking engagements, those kinds of things, to really share that positive message. How do we mm. overcome these mm. things? What would you say to someone who's struggling a little bit with something like this? Well, the first thing that I needed to realize was that I'm not the only one with this problem or right. with a problem, but you, you turn inward and you feel sorry for yourself and you've just got to have the will to stop that mm -hmm. and look outside yourself and being handicapped in Canada is the best place to be there's yeah. so much support hey. and I mean the CNIB if you are having vision issues register with the CNIB don't be proud like I was and I was in nowheresville for like 10 years. Okay. And, uh, well, there's a good word of advice. Mm. I mean, there are strategies and support mm -hmm. systems in mm -hmm. place. Plug mm -hmm. into them, right? Mm, for sure. And it's, it was just so wonderful. And I fought against getting a white cane that they offered to me several times in, in that 10 years. Oh, no. No, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> and bump. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, so, so the, the time that I went to in the suite, that's about five Thanksgivings ago, um, I had cracked the, my magnifier and I needed a new one. And they said, oh, it's been a while. Let's just test you with the white cane. You know, you don't have to take it home or anything, just, just for our records. And I'm going, okay, just to entertain you, I'll cooperate. So we go on this walk. And uh, she said, all right, so now how about some of the time you close your eyes and some of the time have your eyes open and just let me know when your eyes are closed and when they're open. And we're walking along a very busy street and afterwards, after the walk, she said, well, you walked really much nicer with a better posture when your eyes were closed. So uh -huh. that's telling us you're operating on low vision because you're just more relaxed, more calm. And I said, well, I'm a very calm person. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that was huge and I took it home very reluctantly and stressed myself into a migraine headache for three days thinking how am I going to tell my children my poor children they have a blind mother and the first thing they said was cool could we have our friends over each other could we walk around town can we pretend we're blind like wow mom you can walk all by yourself now Aww. and they were rejoicing and celebrating that this was a really great step that I had taken <laughs> and so I mean that's you know, my story with vision, I just went, huh? And yeah. I started to realize as I did walk around with it that now I had people who knew what to do would offer help, and those who didn't would just get clear out of the way. And it, it just took away the awkwardness and frustration and, and stress that yeah. now I could enjoy a walk instead of coming back home and going, oh my God, I made it home. Right. Just, you know, right. So it was really good. So, so don't be afraid, I would say to you, whether it's whatever your challenge is, to just go outside yourself and find somewhere that there is support or just tell someone and, and, and start to, to start to find a different way. A different that, way to cope mm, and a different way to survive. Way. And yeah. One of the amazing things that you're doing, and I believe the mentorship that you began as a, a, a teacher all those years ago is still going on as you've become an ambassador for an orphanage in Africa mm -hmm. and you have the Jira Children's Choir. Mm -hmm. Tell the folks a little bit about that project. And to me, it just, it's, it just exemplifies the fact that not only have you overcome your own cir circumstances, but you've become an ambassador for others who are much less fortunate than we are. Mm -hmm. Well, it was at a CGMA convention mm -hmm. in Alberta and met Reverend Sebastian Ombima, his first visit to Canada, and Billy Hale uh, gave him the floor to present his ministry. Mm -hmm. And it was near the end of the week before I got to say hello to him, and my two younger daughters were there and, and we chatted with them, and he was such a good and warm individual. And we traded CDs and we went home on the way home, the girls and I were talking and we thought, well, let's support them with whatever cash we can every month. So we, okay. we decided to do that. And then one, one day, one of my daughters, who was about 12 then, was looking at the pictures and she started to cry as she saw these orphans. She says, Mom, we've got to do something more. You, 
you need to give them your visa card. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just didn't want to squash her, you know, her charity, her beautiful mind on that. But I said, well, let's sleep on it and pray that God will give us some creative ideas okay. in the morning. Okay. And otherwise we could give them dad's visa. <laughs> it's always a good solution. Yeah, but just kidding, <laughs> didn't do that. So, <laughs> and so, yes, in the morning, all three of us had an idea about the community, said if we could get the word out somehow. And I said, what if we had a choir? Mm. And so we did, we put it out to the families of Karenport, and 15 families, just like that, joined up. We had about 20 kids nice. that year, and the way I run it now is from February through April, and at the end of April we have a dessert night for the community. Okay. And each year, our fourth one just passed, we've we've raised $2,000 every year. Aww. And been able to send that, and, and I know Sebastian's been overjoyed. They've been able to drill a new well with fresh water. They've been able to replace mm -hmm. a building, the sleeping quarters that were made out of mud before now as a brick building with a proper roof so the children can sleep Aww. in a nice, you know, and environment nice mm. now um, I'm thinking that what we want to make sure that we do here is connect our viewers if they are having an event if they're looking for amazing entertainment mm. piano mm. and singing mm. um, even the the purchase of your CDs a portion of that mm. often goes to the orphanage mm. and and um, how do they get a hold of you Penny what's the best way to get a hold of mm. you well um, I am on Facebook. I have two pages, a personal page and a musician page. So you can find me there, Penny Bure Johnson, or my website, which is being constructed right now, but pennyburejohnson.com. Okay. And my phone number and address is on there. And you're very welcome to phone me at 306-756-2778. <laughs> so there you go. You would like for people to feel mm -hmm. free to call you because mm -hmm. you're now in the business of sharing your music mm -hmm. and your vision mm -hmm. with others, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us today and continue knowing that you are exactly where you need to be mm -hmm. and um, continue with the good reports on what you're doing. It's exciting to to uh, just hear such a positive message. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of this station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. 